and welcome. This is our fourth in the series of interviews with people in science. I'm Jo from the FSC and I'm going to introduce you now to my friend and ex-colleague Josie. Hey Josie. Hi Jo. Uh, I'm Josie. Uh, <laughs> I used to work for Field Studies Council with Jo uh, and now I work for the Environment Agency as an Environmental Monitoring Officer uh, and I work in the West Midlands area. Ooh, okay, so tell us more. What do you do? What's your job as an environment within the environment agency? Um, so I work within the field monitoring team. Uh, so from the name, my job is very field based and I'm outside a lot. Uh, we do all of the environmental monitoring so, uh, for the agency. So I do things like kick samples, looking at freshwater invertebrates, electric fishing surveys, uh, water quality monitoring, so like collecting water for chemistry analysis, um, and yeah, lots of other cool ecology and sciencey stuff like that. Excellent. So, is that something that you've always been interested in, or did you kind of come into it through a strange route? How did you get into that field? Um, it was something I was always in interested in. So, I did geography at university, not biology, and then, um, but I was always interested in like environmental science type stuff like that. Uh, but then I finished uni, uh, volunteered for the uh, local wildlife trust for about a year, um, and started working with their environmental education groups. So, then that brought me to the Field Studies Council. Yeah. Um, and then decided that I wanted to leave teaching, um, uh, but I was still really keen to work outside. So all the field work experience I had from that job helped me get this job in the Environment Agency. Okay, awesome. And so it, it, you said a little bit about the kind of things you might do. So what's a, a kind of average day like or a normal day at work for you? Um, it differs a lot from day to day. Uh, obviously at the moment it's very different to how it would normally be, yeah. but I'll talk about a pre-COVID day. Um, normally I would be outside four out of five days a week in the summer. Uh, so um, normally quite long days in the summer, shorter days in the winter. Um, so it can be that I will be working on my own. So sometimes I have a day of just collecting um, kick samples and water quality samples. So I will drive around in a van on my own all day um, <laughs> collecting that. Um, and sometimes I'll be part of a team doing electric fishing surveys, which is where we put electric current through the water, stun fish, and then we can work out, we measure them and scale them and stuff so we can work out their age. And um, then they're returned to the water nice and healthy. Oh, phew, phew. <laughs> I thought you were telling us something awful then. <laughs> um, in the winter, I tend to be either in the office or in the lab looking at my kick samples. And um, I speciate invertebrates, so to work out the health of our rivers around the country. Wow, okay, so that's the, the general point of the, all the surveys is to look at the quality of the water and the environment and the ecosystem. Yes, yeah, so um, obviously we collect the water quality samples because that tells you straight away mm -hmm. the chemistry of the water. And then also things like looking at the invertebrates that live there and the fish that live there can also tell you about how good the water quality is. Awesome. And what does that information do? Or what, what, I know what the point is because we obviously want to know why our, um, or if our rivers are healthy, but what does that information then help to go um, towards legislation or... Does it help with kind of monitoring? Uh, yeah, so it, in, it's, some of it's to um, kind of identify issues. So sometimes like mon monitoring's targeted around something that we think might be impacting the water quality. Okay. So we'll do a lot of surveys up and downstream of that. And um, also the fish data that we collect goes to help like um, fisheries as well, our fisheries team who do things like habitat, uh, like improvements and stuff like that to help encourage more so yeah it, as well as telling people it also helps influence projects and things that go yeah. on and I and I guess that can help if with then kind of um giving rise to conservation projects as you say so then like kind of managing things in order to help the environment yeah so we work very closely with um wildlife trusts and rivers trusts as well to help with like habitat improvements and things like that so well, it sounds really exciting. I do a lot of kick sampling as well with uh, students, but I'm sure yours are much more uh, 
kind of um, thorough and a, and a less sort of splashing around. So you, you've mentioned quite a few techniques there. So um, with your sort of kick sampling, is that uh, are you what are you kind of looking for in there? What are you what are you doing with the samples that you've got? Um, so we have some routine ones that we do every single year, and then others that we do to try and identify stuff. But um, we are looking at the invertebrates that live in the river. So we always do like a set methodology. So every single kick sample we take is always three minutes in length so that everyone does it the same. Yeah. And then, yeah, we look for the invertebrates that live in there. So things like every species or taxa has a score. So obviously if it's full of fly larva and things like that, it's not so great. Um, if you've got a massive range of species and you know that the water quality is better. So what would be something that you'd be excited to find? If you, if you looked in that tray, what would be a, like a ooh moment? Um, I'm trying to think. I see so many invertebrates now that I, <laughs> <laughs> I spent the whole day in the lab today. Um, <laughs> um, things like uh, damselfly larva, dragonfly larva, pretty cool to find. I don't find a lot of them them um depending on the season um there's some like really cool caddis fly that you can find as well that yeah. i like i like <laughs> caddis flies too so caddis flies are the ones that kind of they they produce mucus don't they they roll around in the dirt and the mud and they kind of form a little shell they're very bit... pretty shells yes but yeah. well, yeah. some are just use like bits of leaves and things that are there and others make very pretty things out sand yeah oh yeah yeah i've seen some really really lovely ones and then i've seen some that just look like a stick and then suddenly kind of the legs start moving and you're like oh the, the stick is moving um but yes okay so so those are kind of cool day-to-day -day things that you might see so can you tell us anything about maybe uh, like an achievement or a really exciting thing that's happened what's your best kind of experience or story from work um two things one thing's i'm just pretty proud that i can identify invertebrates to species level now it took me a year and a half to be signed off as competent at that. So, oh, did you have a test? Um, someone has to always check your recheck ah. it, and you have to agree to a certain percentage before you're allowed to do it on your own. Oh, well, that um, is an achievement. Well done. Took a year and a half. Um, one of the best experiences I've had is we did an electric fishing survey um, on a stretch of river in a park, uh, and it happened to be an Easter holiday, so we gathered quite a crowd. As we were doing it um, and but we had to do it's called a catch depletion survey so we keep doing it until we get a depletion in fish numbers um, so when we came up with our first catch there was loads of people there and then they soon got bored and left but there were two boys who stayed um, and they helped us measure all the fish and they helped us scale take scales from them all so we could age them um, and the second time we came back we said that we'd missed this massive fish it was a pike that's about a meter long we're like, we didn't manage to get it, but we're going to go back again and we're going to try and get it. Um, and so they stood on the bridge over the river where we were fishing and were just chanting like, get the pike, get the pike. <laughs> it was like, it was such a, like, but like, you, I got home and was like, that was such a good day at work. Yeah. I went, and everybody needs like a kind of cheerleading team at work yeah. to, just, to just chant, like, you know, giving you that backup. I love that idea. And actually that's, it, that's your transferable skill, isn't it? Because you will have had that sort of the way of talking to those students or, or children, they're not even students, but engaging them in and kind of bringing that sort of engagement with the public, which is, is nice as well. Yeah, it's really nice that, yeah. And they like, one of them said he's gonna go home and talk to his dad about starting going fishing. And so, so it's not quite nice that you'd like got them. Yeah, nice. yeah, that's really good. Well, that's a very, I, I like that, that is an achievement. So is getting, you know, signed off on your identification skills, but I, I like the get the pike. That's good. Did you, did you get the pike? No. Oh no, oh no. Well, there's always next time, always next time. No, we were hoping this year, but unfortunately it was due for April, so it didn't happen. But next year. <laughs> next year, 2021 is the year of the pike. We'll make it happen. Okay, well, thank you so much, Josie. That has been really, really interesting and informative. And uh, I hope everyone at home has enjoyed it and heard listening about um, some of the kind of experiences and um, exciting uh, fishing experiences that Josie's had along the way. Um, so if people want to know more, where could they look if they wanted to know more about this? Um, so 
all of the surveys and data that we've ever collected is on the Environment Agency website if you wanted to look at that and if you want to get um, involved in some of the projects that we do then your local wildlife trust would probably be a good place to start. Excellent. Okay, so you've heard it there, guys, if you want to get involved with uh, kind of helping to survey things or maybe just if you see people in a local park trying to uh, catch a big pike, get in there and start giving them some, you know, some feedback. So thank you so much for joining us, JC. It's been awesome to talk to you um, and hopefully everyone's uh, enjoyed that and look forward to the next one, number five on the list. Okay, so thanks very much, guys, and we're off. Bye. Bye.